मन्युम मयी धे ही मन्युम मयी धे ही दैट वाज एजुर्वेदा 19.9 19.9 मन्युम मयी धे ही सो आई वाज टेलिंग दैट मन्युम मींस एंगर आयर वन मोर वी टेक पैरेललली मा कृधः मा कृधः अथर्वा 11.2.20 11.2.20 मा कृधः इट इज डोंट बी एंग्री मन्युमयी देहि मींस Let there be anger in me. Let there be anger in me. That is Ajar Veda. Don't get angry. that is in ayurveda it says oh god please instill in me anger and in atharva 11.2.20 it says don't get angry now on the face of it it appears as both are contradictory to one another are able to observe that yes. both hmm. but this problem we can solve it Uh, only when it all can be cleared only when we look into the roots yeah namaste sir uh, are you able to see me yes yes सो <laughs> when you go to the roots of the words then things will be clear uh, that is when i come to this uh, manyum mai dehi there the root of the word manyu is mana gnane mana gnane and when i come to this krodha in ma krudha that is krudha akroshe krudha akroshe krudha akrosh the roots are different but on the face of it uh, they appear to be same now we have to analyze now the first question is is anger good or bad that is the first question is anger good or bad now the answer for it generally is anger is bad that's what we say काम क्रोध लोभ मोह मद मात्सर्य दिस ऑल दि एनिमी विथ इन एस एंड वी हेव टू गेट इट ऑफ दम एंड क्रोध इज रॉंग बट वेद गोस ए स्टेप डीपर एंड इट से क्रोध बै इट सेज नीदर गुड नर बैड 
krodha is neither good nor bad it depends upon what or under what condition anger is there that's the thing say if the anger is uncontrolled yes it is unhealthy it is dangerous whereas if the same anger is under control and thoughtful yes it is good and situation also i will give you say if something wrong is going on before us and we are a witness for it if i say oh, i am so peaceful i will not get angry and if i do so the wrong thing will continue there so when i am a witness to something that is going wrong i have to be intolerant i have to oppose it and for that opposition i have to become angry and tell them i am angry i am not able to tolerate this stop this now this is positive whereas because of my meekness if i become angry yes then something is wrong with me so this anger we have to identify with two things one is with knowledge with thought under circumstances where i am trying to prevent something untoward if it is happening that is called as manyu that's manajnane and this manyu is positive and that positive anger is required satvik anger satvik you understand the word satvik it's an anger which is based on pious things now one common feature between krodha and manyu is intolerance intolerance is a common factor but here this intolerance is thought over manyu krodha is intolerance which is uncontrolled tell it in easy terms if it is krodha our uh, blood pressure will go up shoot up if it is manyu blood pressure will be under control nothing will happen in both cases it is intolerance only both cases it is intolerance but that intolerance is positive in one place and negative in another place if it is positive fine that is manyu which we want dehi is dudhai dharana poshanayo oh god instill satvik anger so i don't have uh, the right word in english for uh, manyu and i can differentiate it from krodha but here i have got the differentiation based on the root of it krodha is krodha akroshe intolerance i shout manyu it is intolerance but i try to prevent something bad which is happening so intolerance has got two faces one is manyu one is krodha krodha is negative dangerous manyu wonderful fine we want it there for example in a, a police station the police will beat the culprit that's not krodha that's manyu it is done with the intention of making that person good he has done something wrong and he should be made known that i have done something wrong for that maybe they beat him a bit fine now that is manyu whereas that culprit beat somebody because of intolerance or to snatch something from that person that is krodha and that is not allowed here also it's beating there also it's beating but the purpose is different so if it is knowledge oriented based on knowledge and well thought out thing then it becomes manyu fine krodha is not allowed so makrodha is something different manyu mai dehi is something different we should be able to differentiate between that as far as manyu is concerned yes we want it because we have to oppose certain things which are anti social anti human so to oppose anti human to oppose anti social we have to be intolerant i cannot tolerate it that is one new because it is well thought over because of my weakness if i do it that becomes krodha that is not admissible krodha is dangerous so this can start to see one is manyu mai dehi another one is makrodha if you can suggest two different words in english that is fine anger i i am not able to differentiate between manyu and krodha like that in english mm-hmm. you can suggest a word that would be fine mm-hmm. 
manyu i can qualify that word is uh, sattvic anger sattvic anger wanted weakness based anger not wanted so like that i have to do it i am not able to find a single word for uh, manyu and krodha i can find but manyu i am not able to find there's problem next maryade maryade putram adhehi maryade putram adhehi maryade putram adhehi atharva 6.81 मर्यादे मर्यादे पुत्रमाधे सो दिस मर्यादा Mariyada in uh, colloquial language is understood as respect what we give to a person. Respect. But the actual meaning of the word Mariyada is not that. The primary meaning of the word Mariyada is limit. 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 The border, the limit within which we have to be and we are not supposed to trespass that. So such a <coughs> limit is called as maryada <coughs> the border the limit one more word is there in uh, vedic language that is ani 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 a n i ani not ani 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 also means border the line within which i have to do my things i am not supposed to trespass it and that is called as maryada maryada and even uh, while speaking about maryada the vedic language is so precise say another word is there for that that's called abhividhi maryada abhividhi ani this all different words now there is a subtle difference between this maryada and abhividhi one is inclusive one is exclusive i will explain say my house is up to that road so this is sentence i speak up my house is up to that road so that means road is exclusive road is not mine up to that road is my property do i speak of road that road is exclusive so instead if i say my house is up to that compound the compound is the end of my property and next it is a road i can say either way my property is up to that uh, compound or my property is up to the road if i say road road is exclusive up to the road it is my property if i say compound including the compound it's my property so one is inclusive one is exclusive maryada is inclusive in nature abhividhi is exclusive in nature and is just border limit so these are all different uh, ways of looking at things and they are very scientific and uh, subtle maryada inclusive abhividhi exclusive both mean border both mean <coughs> the line of separation ani is the time of separation ani you remember i will be discussing about ani at a different point ani you have to remember so maryada primarily means limit then adhehi dehi again 
ಮೃಧಾಯ್ ಧಾರಣ ಪೋಷಣೆಯೋ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಬೇರ್ ದೆನ್ ಪುತ್ರ ನಾವ್ ಐ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪುತ್ರ ಜನರಲಿ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಸನ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ಬಟ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಪುತ್ರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಪುರು ತ್ರಾಯತ ಇತಿ ಪುತ್ರ ಪುರು ತ್ರಾಯತ ಇತಿ ಪುತ್ರ ತ್ರಾಯತ ಇಸ್ ತ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಪಾಲನೆ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ರೂಟ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ಅ ವರ್ಡ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಗೋ ಬೇಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಧಾತು ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹೋಲ್ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಗ್ವೇಜ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಯೋಗಿಕ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರೈಮರಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ all other meanings are secondary traying palane palane means to protect to take care of puru means in an exemplary way puru means in an exemplary way so the one who takes care of us who protects us in exemplary way is putra and the feminine gender of it is putri absolutely there is no discrimination in meaning it's only the change of gender putra is one who protects us in an exemplary way in a wonderful way in a great way and it's done by a feminine person it becomes putri generally the son or the daughter do this to their parents so a son <coughs> or daughter is called as putra or putri okay that's the secondary meaning the primary meaning is one who protects us one who takes care of us in a great way that is putra putri and one more thing i have already told you if something is said with reference to putra if you can replace it with putri and if it holds good yes that is inclusive of it putra includes putri something is said as husband now in place of husband if i replace it by wife if it holds good yes husband includes wife or wife includes husband i need not say husband and also again as wife it's inclusive this is one of the vedic grammar rules when it's said in masculine if feminine also holds good yes both are included in it though in the mantra it is said in masculine feminine is also included or if feminine is said and if i replace it with masculine and if it holds good yes masculine is inclusive i need not say it again i have given such examples jaya patye madhumatim vacham vadatu shantivam let the wife speak smoothly and pleasantly to the husband okay let me replace let the husband speak smoothly with the wife yes it holds good so though in the mantra it is said let the wife husband is also included in that it is mutual anywhere anywhere if the masculine can be replaced with feminine and if it holds good excellent let the wife bear children say for example now let the wife bear children in that wife if I let the husband bear children it won't hold good so it is not inclusive as simple as that. let the husband take care of the family let the wife take care of the family yes it holds good fine it is inclusive though it is in masculine feminine is included where it holds good that's a law that's a rule so here putram means secondary meaning that is son it also includes putri but the basic meaning is the one who protects us who takes care of us in the best way in the exemplary way now maryade putra madhehi ultimately now comes down to let us have children within limits let us have children within limits it may be putra or putri that doesn't matter let us have children within limits now the concept of family planning is not uh, new it's the oldest thing it's the oldest thing
Now the thing behind it, the concept behind it is wonderful. It is not okay by having children. The children whom the child whom we give birth to should be finally a good citizen of the world. So it's possible for me to take care of the child to make it a good citizen of the world. Okay, you can have one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't matter. But if it's not possible for me to take care of the child and to make it a good citizen of the world, it is enough. I have one or two. So that is the concept. It doesn't depend upon the number. It depends upon the quality of the children. Having children is not great, but making the child a good citizen of the world is more important for me. Say I have got financial uh, background, I have got time, I have got knowledge, and I can make every child a good citizen of the world. Fine. I can have three, four, five, six. Doesn't matter. But if my resources are not there, if knowledge is not there, if time is not there to take care of them, fine. Let us have just one child or two children and be happy. But ultimately, the purpose is the children who we bear has to be good citizens of the world. They have to be useful to the society. They cannot be a burden on the society. That's a very important thing. Even then, even then, there is another mantra which I'll quote later. It says. Maximum allowed is ten children, and pati meka dasham kruthi. Let your husband be your eleventh child. That's what it says. Maximum limit they have given is ten. That is provided all other things are fine. The resources, the time, the knowledge, and everything is there. The highest limit they have given is ten, not beyond ten. Pati meka dasham kruthi. Meka dasha is eleven. So let your husband be your eleventh child. That's the end of it. So here, in place of husband, if I put wife, it holds good there. So when I say pati meka dasham krithi, it means pati meka dasham krithi also is valid. So husband and wife are children to one another. After a certain limit, they take care of each other. Maximum is ten. But even that ten, because that's maximum, it's not that we should have ten children. Maria de putra madhe. It puts a limit on that. Have it within limits. What is that limit? Your capacity to bring them up, your capacity to guide them, your capacity to teach them, your capacity to give time to them, and finally mould them into good citizens of the world. That draws the limit. Mariyade putra madhi. Putra inputs putri. That I have made it clear. Sharma ji. Sharma ji. Ah, tell me. Uh, one question. Uh, can you repeat that? Patim ekadasham krudhi. Patim ekadasham krudhi. 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 That uh, exact location of it I'll give you. Okay. Patim ekadasham krudhi. Make your husband your eleventh child. Make your wife your eleventh child. Both hold. Mahima te next one. Mahima te anye na na sanna she. Mahima te anye na na sanna she. Mahima te anye na na sanna she. Your glory, te mahima. Your glory, your achievement, your greatness, anything. Te mahima. Anye na na sanna she will not happen because of somebody else's effort. If you want to achieve, you have to work for it. If you want to become great, you have to work for it. If you want to become respectable, you have to work for it. If somebody does it, you will not get it. Kannada dalle vand gade ide. A yen odi dio na manna B A. 
ನೀನ್ ಏನ್ ಓದಿದೀಯೋ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಣ್ಣ ಬಿ ಎ ನಿಮ್ ಅಣ್ಣ ಬಿ ಎದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೇನ್ ಬಂತು ನೀನೇನ್ ಓದಿದ್ಯಾ ನಮ್ಮ ಅಣ್ಣ ಬಿ ಎ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಬೂಸ್ಟ್ ಅಪ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಬಡಿಸ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಸೊ ಅನದರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿ ಇಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಒನ್ಸ್ becoming great one's achievement one's doing things mainly the spiritual thing there is no proxy so it's very easy to understand say i am hungry who has to eat are bhai you are hungry you have to eat i am tired can you take rest if i take rest i will get uh, relaxed but you are tired you have to relax yourself you have to take rest in the same way if you want to achieve if you want to become great or if you want to have your spiritual progress who has to do it you only have to do it if somebody does you will not be benefited somebody else cannot do something and pass it on to you that's not possible passing it on or doing it as proxy is not possible is unscientific and impractical now this also you have to note and uh, remember it because it will be discussing it about this again this is also very important if you want to get something you have to work for it very simple somebody else if they work the benefit will be to them not to you they cannot pass it on to you in terms of maybe things a little is possible a little i'm telling a little is possible okay i earn my bread i share it with somebody else fine so this can be done but little i said because if i work for my bread and get it yes i know the value of it whereas if somebody else works for my bread and they share it with me of course i get bread but i will not know the value of it because i have not worked for it i don't know how much effort it goes into the the person who has worked for it alone will know how much effort goes into it and how valuable it is but if i get it free because somebody is labor then maybe i get it but i'll not be able to know its true worth because i have not worked for it it's as simple as that. if i want to know the value of something i have to work for it i have to sweat for it yes then i will know its value mahimate annena na sannashi if somebody else does it you will not know the value of it you will not be able to experience it to the full thus you are not working for it just come free now at this point one thing is uh, very important to note that usually what we do is we earn for ourselves and we reserve something for our children i think about this here yeah. they get it free because we have worked and we have kept something for them to inherit if they inherit of course they get it but they are not know the value of it because they have not labored for it they have not worked for it it's we who have worked so in the background of this mantra it's better we live for ourselves and teach our children to earn for themselves rather than keeping some wealth for them to inherit if i keep something for them to inherit tomorrow it is free for them they will not know the value and they'll just squander it or the probability of they squandering it is very high because they don't know the value of it you teach them how to earn that's okay but don't keep something for them to inherit this is a very important thing and it forms the basis of the spiritual progress and the vedic philosophy it says you live for yourself and for others you help them to live on their own effort don't keep anything don't give anything to them you need not do it now this aspect is at the base of lot of corruption that's going on in the world today anyway why corruption they want to amass wealth but so much wealth is not required for one person or one family they want to amass so much wealth that they can live their children can live their grandchildren also can live. now this mantra it says don't do it because it's all free for them and they squander it 
they don't know the value of it they will not know let them know the value of it so you teach them how to earn wealth but don't keep it as a small difference that understand it is one particular thing is understood well yes we will live for ourselves and make our children efficient to earn their living but we will not keep anything so there is no cause for me there is no reason for me to amass wealth so there is no reason for me to amass wealth okay i'll be on my pious way and i'll not go to unhealthy practices of earning wealth so so many things are embedded in this one single mantra mm-hmm. you have to understand it yes we do have love towards our children if it is real love we should make them capable to earn their living rather than make wealth and give it to them there is lot of difference between that mahima te annena na sannashi every achievement has to be by one's own effort somebody's effort will not give you anything if somebody has put their effort it's for them not for you please remember this uh, and another circumstance we'll be discussing about this in detail in detail sir ma what is the location here ah uh, yajurveda 23.35 23.35 yajurveda so another uh, very important topic is being opened with this piece of the mantra magridha ಯಜುರ್ವೇದ ಯಜುರ್ವೇದ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ and this is the last chapter 40th chapter and the first mantra uh, it starts like this you are familiar with this uh, mantra isha vasyam idam sarvam et kinch jagatyam jagat tena tyaktena bhunjithah magridah kasya siddhanam so this is the first mantra of 40th chapter ajurveda it starts with isha vasyam so some people they have separated this 40th chapter and called it as isha vasya upanishad <laughs> isha vasya upanishad is as good as the 40th chapter of ajurveda so you are looking at it as part of ajurveda and not separately as upanishad because as we know upanishad in the hierarchy is at a lower level samhita bhaga brahmana aranyaka then upanishad so its validity is less but if you take it as part of ajurveda its validity is high so we take it as ajurveda 40 40th chapter isha vasu upanishad is as good as that only so here in this magridha kasya siddhana ajurveda 40.1 it gives a guideline and asks a beautiful question gridha gribhi grahane that's the root gribhi grahane grahana is to take but is gribhi grahane that grahana is in the negative sense to snatch it to take forcibly to snatch to take forcibly is called as ಗೃಭಿ ಗ್ರಹಣೆ ಅಫ್ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಟಿವ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಗೃಧ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾ ಈಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಹಿಬಿಟಿಂಗ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಸ್ನಾಚ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಬಲಿ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಬಲಿ ದೆನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಕಸ್ಯ ಸ್ವಿಧನ to whom the wealth belongs to who is the owner of this wealth to whom the wealth belongs to don't snatch don't take it forcibly 
to whom the wealth belongs to. Dhanam is wealth. Upalakshana. Dhanam doesn't mean only money. Anything that is valuable. Sol dhanam. Tasya sweet dhanam. To whom this wealth belongs to. So this is a question which should have bothered us always. But this question uh, intelligently we avoid and forget about it. And say I am the master of, I am the owner of this and that. But it says very clearly, we are never owners of anything we have. It may be under my custody. Just because it's under my custody doesn't mean that I am the owner of it. I am only a user, user, one who uses it. Then who is the owner? It is Satyananda who is the owner of everything. That's the answer. When I study that 40th chapter, that's the answer I get. How is it? I own it, it is under my control. Then it says, of course it's under your control or under your custody and you are a Listen to this word correctly. You are a trustee. You are not an owner. You are a trustee. So something is trusted with you, placed with you. Yes, it is under your custody. It is under your control. But you are not the owner. Ownership is different. Trusteeship is different. A trustee is allowed to manage what is given to his custody. But he cannot climb that I am the owner of it. Now a simple argument is given for this. Okay, you came to this world barehanded. You quit this world barehanded. It's a fact. I never brought anything when I came to this world. And while going also, I am not taking anything from this world. Only between these two, that's the first point is birth, the last point is death. <coughs> between birth and death, lot of things come under my custody, under my control, but I cannot claim that I am the owner of it. Because I never brought it and I am never going to take it. Even the dust, one particle of dust also I cannot take from here. I have to leave everything and go including the body in which I was residing for 60, 70, 80, 90 years. And this whole body I throw and get out. And I say I, it means not the body, it means that Satchit, that soul. Even the body in which I was residing, as though it was mine, I was using it very personally. Even that also I throw and get out. It's also not mine. That's the reality. When you understand this reality, the way we look at life will be totally different. The way we behave will be different. That is, we look at the whole world as though I am a trustee of it, not the owner. Now, if I think that I am the owner of it, I will be careless, I will be callous. I can use it as a like this. I am the owner of it, I can do whatever I want. This will be the attitude. If I am a trustee, the attitude itself is different. That is, I am answerable to someone else, to whatever is there under my custody, under my control. Because I am only a trustee. It's given to me to take care of, to manage. I cannot spoil it. I cannot pollute it. I cannot be careless about it because I am answerable. I have to tell them, okay, this is what I received and this is what I am giving back. Because I am answerable. Because I am a trustee. If I am the owner, I am not answerable to anybody. Okay, it is mine. I'll spoil it, I'll throw it, I'll do anything. Because it's mine, it's, I'm the owner of it. But the ownership is not there to anybody, to anybody. Every one of us, we are all trustees. So let us uh, discuss about this uh, ownership and trusteeship, which is not only in the background of this mantra, in the present day economics, in the present day so many transactions will be doing and almost at every step we talk about it as ownership, ownership, ownership. You own it, 
they have got documents they have got records as owners of it then how do we understand and how do we or how we should connect ourselves with the wealth what we have the possessions what we have got okay we shall discuss it uh, in detail uh, yesterday as not uh, my energy levels were not high so i could not uh, talk to you yesterday day before yesterday power was not here so the whole internet was down uh, so anyhow uh, we could talk today and tomorrow also for some time we will talk good night all of you